All right, what's up guys, Lynn Ray here. Uh, this is gonna be a little different. So this is actually gonna be my start of my learning to code series. So this is a little different than what I normally do. But before we continue on with the rest of this video, if you see or hear anything in the video that's beneficial for you or anyone else, like always, go ahead and like, subscribe, comment, and share the video. As some of you know, I am learning to code right now. So I'm going through a few different, um, I'm, I'm a member of a few different online communities and also actual physical communities here in town that uh, where people are learning to code. And people are at different, there are various levels. Um, the meetup that I go to, it, it happens once a week. And uh, so far I am the newest person, it seems. I'm the person who knows the least, <laughs> which is fine. You know, everyone's got their varying levels of, uh, of knowledge in this particular crap and um, I just started so um, I happen to know the least so right now I'm in a process of just trying to find so I can put that there right now I'm in a process of trying to find a uh, a particular I guess you could call it a I guess a method that works for me um, I've I have I'm a member of what's called free code camp I'll leave a link up to that in the description I'm also a member of this website you can see right here, Code Academy. Uh, I'm a free member of this. I'm not a paying member of this. They're, they're, they have levels. They have the free membership. They have Code Academy Pro, which looks like it's $19.99. Then they have Code Academy Pro Intensive. Intensive. I don't know how much that is. I haven't actually looked into it. I'll leave a link to those in the description as well. So just click on that. Uh, I'm not affiliated with these guys in any, any way. Um, so just click on it you'll uh, take you to their websites. So I'm just trying to find a right method for me. Uh, what I'm finding, I'm also, sorry, I'll go back. I'm also taking a, uh, I purchased a course, it's $35 um, total. So one payment of $35, you get free access, or not free access, you get access to this particular website with different, um, different courses. And uh, I actually like that course, but, um, I, uh, I just decided I'm gonna you know get away from it for for a little bit there, I don't know there's something about it I do enjoy it but there's something about it I just didn't feel like I didn't want to proceed with that uh, I will go back to it because I think I do like the guy's teaching method but um, I will uh, I just decided to just to look out and see what else I can find out here um, that will allow me to learn as much as possible and uh, eventually, I do plan on going to one of the coding boot camps where I'm looking over here, cameras here. Eventually, I do plan on going to one of the coding boot camps and uh, tackling that, uh, getting my feet more into the door. So right now, I'm in a process of learning front-end development, so which is basically just the stuff you see on the screen here, right? So the, the items that people see when they look at the website, that's what I'm learning right now. And uh, once I become very comfortable with that or, you know, relatively comfortable with that, I'll venture into the back end portion, the portion, the, you know, the parts that people don't necessarily see, the parts that aren't necessarily part of the, the user interface. So with all that said, um, this is my day number one. I've actually been, been practicing. Um, I've actually been doing this for probably about an hour and a half today or so. I just decided to start this series now and, um, you know, and just uh, get this, get this thing rolling. One of the reasons I'm doing a series is because A, right, it'll give me a little accountability. Oh, sorry, no, that's not A. That is, that's B. So A, talking to you, the viewers, the watchers, uh, will allow me to retain the information more. One of the things I've learned um, is that the best way to learn something is to gather that information and then teach it to someone else, or at least go over it with someone else. And so that's what I'll be doing. So that's A and B gives me some accountability too. So my goal right now uh, is to code every single day. Um, I'm gonna call this maybe a, a 100 day challenge. So I'm gonna try to do it for 100 days straight. Obviously the goal is to do it every single day. Some days it gets kind of hard because I you know, I have a, a fairly busy work schedule. You know, I, I work, I have children. You know, there's things that are happening, events and things like that. So it makes it a little bit hard sometimes. And uh, but the goal is to get on here 
and uh, do it at least, you know, sometime every single day. You know, my goal right now is to do, I think I've got, I have here two to three hours of coding a day, which, which is very difficult to do with my current schedule, but that is my goal. Um, yeah, and so that's kind of it. So I'll get on with this. Uh, I want to briefly go over something here. So right now, so this is what I'm studying right now. But this is just kind of some nerd stuff here. So I found this website um, just recently. It's called projecteuler.net. And basically, <laughs> again, nerd stuff. You may not be interested in this, but um, they have problems. These are problems that you can solve. And so from the looks of it, there's problems 1 to 614. I'll give you an idea of problem number one. And, um, and they get increasingly more and more difficult all the way to 614. And they also have a bunch that are that are haven't been answered yet as well. So click on problem number one. And let's see if we can slide that over here. And so Multiples of 3 and 5. Problem number 1. If we list all the natural numbers below 10 that are multiples of 3 or 5, we get 3, 5, C's. Multiples is 23. Find the sum of all the multiples of 3 or 5 below 1,000. So basically, pretty self, it's blinking like that. My screen is blinking for some reason. But um, uh, you find the multiples of those numbers, and then you put the answer there. And confirmation code. And then you submit it, and, or you check it. If it's correct, um, you get access. It's kind of interesting because they don't actually give you the answer. Uh, you have to get, from my, from my, my understanding, once you get the, get the answer correct, you will be given access to the actual answer and how that answer was made into a form. And so you can interact with other people on how they solve this problem. So. Very interesting, very cool. I think I'm going to start doing this at least, you know, maybe one or two problems if I can, you know, at least one problem every day in addition to the coding here. So uh, let's see what else I wanted to show you here. So that's day. I want to talk about that. And I won't talk about that either. Okay. So we'll go back to here. So this is Code Academy. Uh, again, Code Academy has, I don't know if I said it yet, but uh, Code Academy has different. Uh, varying levels, a so free level, pro level, and intensive pro. I do the co the free level. Uh, actually, I did say that. So, but Code Academy, I think, is pretty interesting, uh, pretty cool because it gives you access to uh, lots of uh, lots of courses, and I think the the courses are laid out fairly fairly nicely, and so they're very easy to go from step to step and learn. And that's how I prefer to learn. I don't like to go, you know, you know, say for instance, you're learning how to add, right? If I'm learning how to add, why do I need, you know, why are you trying to show me how to do geometry, you know, at the same time, right? So I still need to learn how to add. And there's this thing, I don't know if this is actually the technical term, but education gaps, right? So there's the reason what 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 people are finding is that the reason people don't get some of the more advanced information is because they missed out on something that was less advanced. And so if I'm learning HTML, this is just for me, you know, if I'm learning HTML, I only want to learn HTML until I have a reasonable understanding of the concepts, uh, which I think I do right now. Uh, right now, I just need to learn, you know, memorize more or excuse me, uh, remember, memorize, uh, learn more of the, uh, the tags and elements and things like that. But Right now I'm learning HTML, so that's pretty much all I want to learn right now is HTML. Once I have that, that, that reasonable understanding, then I'll move on to CSS, and then I'll move on to JavaScript, then I'll move on to jQuery if needed, and all the other uh, learning, the, uh, the other languages. All right, I feel like I'm rambling right now, so I'm going to go ahead and get on with this, and right now I'm in the process of learning HTML tables, and uh, so this is where I'm at. So I just... Clicked on. I actually did this page earlier, but I deleted the information because I, um, I don't know, I was, it was just unorganized. I was just putting crap in there. And so it was correct, but it just wasn't pretty. And so I actually deleted it and I'll go back and redo it for, uh, for the video here. So also I'm doing 25 minute segments, 25 minutes. I like to do 
uh, study for 25 minutes, then take a five minute rest break, study for 25 minutes, take a five minute rest break, and just repeat that process. Just gives me time to get into the work and then a nice, decent sized rest break. All right, enough of my talking. All right, so right now we're learning on spanning columns. Man, my mouth is dry. Mouth is dry. All right, so basically we have these, this table here. Um, I actually put in all this information here. So this is actually a table header. This is company name, number of items to ship, and action, uh, next action. Uh, and this is all the information. So for people who are learning tables, you know, if, it's easy to kind of write out a table. But in HTML, it's interesting because you have to actually you have to go by a row. So you have to actually input a row element and then you have to inside the row, you have to put in a, um, a, a table data element, right? And so it's kind of interesting. So it seems like a, a lot of work and it actually is. It's a lot of, you know, just writing it out. It's very easy to write out stuff, but um, in code, it takes a little bit more information to get this, this pretty little little uh, little table here. So you'll see that here. So pretty much all of this information right here is this information over here. All right, back to work. All right, an index HTML span a TD. TD stands for uh, table data element across two columns. And so basically, in order to, I'm going to do that. I'm I don't know. I'm I'm actually going to do that below because I had earlier I had it here. And it was just ugly. So I'm actually going to put that table data below. So I have to put a table row in first. And then let's see, TV. And then call span. So call span is basically just the, um, I guess you'd call it a syntax for column span. So I'm going to have a, a, a row that spans two columns. So, so pretty, 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 uh, pretty self-explanatory there. And so you don't have to actually put anything, uh, but so I'll just go ahead and close that out and span TD. And then you have to always close out your, close out your, um, put a closing tag and putting close, closing tags just lets HTML know that uh, you are through with that particular element. All right, we'll go ahead and run. And what's going to happen, it's going to put two rows. So notice down here, I just put one row that spans two columns. So that's what that is. So one a row, two columns. So that two is two cells, two columns. All right, so I'll go ahead and press enter there. <sighs> All right, so now we're gonna do the same thing for rows, so spanning rows. All right, and here's something, I was on this page as well before, uh, something I think is interesting. So this is called a comment tag uh, or element or tag, I guess. I guess the whole thing would be a yeah, tag. And so um, basically it's a less than exclamation dash dash and then a dash dash greater than. So whatever is in between those these two little marks uh, basically is called a comment. So you can't see this on the actual screen here or actually on this side. So it's if you want to put information. So if I want to put like this row, it, you know, outlines all of the dogs in the world, right? So something random, weird like that. You can put that here. And so if I go back into here two weeks from now, I'll be like, okay, this row, all the dogs in the world, you know, but it won't actually be shown in here. And so, so it's just, you know, put, used to put information on the screen. Okay. All right. So next we've got to put a, a, um, a row span here. So it says there's an HTML document, span a TD element across two rows and so so let's see what we got here 
So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put it below this. That way, um, is that right? Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm going to put it below. That way it doesn't, you know, because all of this information is going to be pushed over into the next slide, and that way it doesn't look too ugly. It stays in a nice, orderly, fa orderly fashion. So as always, i got to put my rows there. And uh, let's go down and say that I'm going to cost two things, so I'm going to go ahead and put that to you. Those band. I'm not sure what's going on with my computer here. That's weird. It started, uh, my screen went, went, uh, went dim for some reason. And then, go ahead and throw it down. So what is this? So I want to go ahead and close that out to you, to you And then there we go. So next, basically, there should be two rows here. Okay, let's see what happens. One. Is that correct? All right, so there it is. Wait, did I do that correctly? Um, it's going to cost two rows. I don't know if that worked out right. Let's see. I want to see something here. So nothing really happened there. So let's try something here. TV. Um, test two. To the, let's see, run, see what happens. There we go. Okay, so right now I have a row. Let's see. Let's... Oh, you know what? That's why. All right, I'm going to go ahead and change this up a little bit. So actually, I'm going to go TH, table header. And I think if my, logically, it, Think that let's see what happens. So it should have no, that's not right. Uh, let's see what happens here. Okay. Well, I'm assuming maybe I'm thinking about this. Oh, I guess I should put two there. All right. So. So that's a table, table header, and it should span two rows. So what I, I don't know, maybe I'm thinking about this the wrong way, but uh, oops, hold on one second here. All right, let's see. Maybe I'm thinking about this the wrong way, <laughs> but I was for some reason thinking that this particular command here or element would make like uh, it would be a table header that spanned two rows. So it would actually go up and down two rows. But maybe that's not the case unless there's something else under it. That doesn't make sense, though. Let's look at this information here. All right. So table header. Got it. Well, let's 
let me see what happens if I just replicate that and see what because I this is a little this has got me here so I'm, I'm just going to copy all of this and see what happens put that under there I'm going to keep what I have already there and see what happens run morning work schedule Actually, I'm going to delete what I have here. That way there's call span 2. Okay. Run. Okay. So, uh, you know what? I think it doesn't really work unless you're using multiple rows. But I am using multiple rows. So I'm going to delete that. Sorry, I feel like, uh, actually, I'm not sorry. This is, this is me learning here. I have to figure this out. So I'm going to put some space there so I don't uh, confuse anything. And then run, see what happens. Okay, so this is this little row here is my row that spans two columns, which is here row that column span two. So it's the it's the data that spans two columns. And then this is my there's no header here. Let's see header five 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 those are subs. I need something some visuals here that's why I do that. So header five five five. Okay. All right. So there we go. So Okay, so header 555. Five, five. All right, so let's see. So this is my one row. The single row is this single row. All right. Uh, oh. Got it. Okay. <laughs> I got it. All right. I'm going to put that down there and then I'll click it in a second. So I'm going to just put that, space that out just so I can get a better understanding of this. My computer is acting funny right now for some reason. I'm not sure why. But that's really uh, bothering me. So this is row number two, which is here. And so I have in the second row, so in the first cell I have morning, which is here. The second cell I have work, which is here. And third I have relax, which is here. So basically what's going to happen is when I press run, these other rows will be here. So what's going to happen is in this first row, I'm going to have afternoon underneath. And in the second row, it's going to be blank. That's what's going to happen. And then in the next row, which will be row number four, which will be down here, um, it'll say afternoon in the first row. And then the second cell will say evening. But then this third row should be empty, and then on the other side it will say evening. All right, let's just see what happens here. Oh, there we go. That makes sense now. So this is spanning. So this is row number two, it's spanning three rows. So row number two, so it's spanning one, two, three rows. That makes sense. All right. I think I understand that now. <laughs> all right, so it took me a minute here. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and delete all of this. And I'm gonna go ahead and put my information back in there because my information won't actually show properly because I don't have any information underneath it. 
That's why. So I was a little confused there for a second. But I got it now. All right, so, so right now I need to put that, uh, so, to E, so row span, and equals, and then it wants uh, two, I think it was two, and then I'm going to go ahead and that, and then I'm going to close that out, C, D. All right, so that's pretty good. All right, run, that should all be correct. I'm pretty sure it is. All right, now let's move on. Table body. Over time, a table can grow to contain a lot of data and become very long. When this happens, the table can be sectioned off, so that is easier to manage. Long tables can be sectioned off using table body element, T body. All right. So obviously, uh, an element basically is an opening tag, a closing tag, which is basically the opening tag with a forward slash before the first or after the, the greater than sign. And um, all of the information in between those two, those two tags. So an element is a complete thing. So the tags and the, and the information inside of the tags. All right, the T body element should contain the all. Interesting. The T body element should contain all of the table's data, excluding the table heading, or in this other exercise. Oh, okay. So that's a little confusing because you have the you have what's called the head of the HTML document and the body of the HTML document. Whatever is in the head, you can't actually see um, unless it has the title. But here it's saying you wouldn't put the. But there's also a header, and headers actually go in the body, and you can see the headers. But here it's saying you don't put the headers, the table headers in the T body. So it's different. Okay, anyways. An example above, all of the table data is continued within the table body element. Note, however, that the headings were kept in the table's body. See, now it's saying it sounds different. Wait, did I read that properly? The table headings. Oh, all right, that makes sense. Oh no, it doesn't make sense, but I'll figure it out in a minute here. Uh, enclose rows two, three, four, five, and six of the table in the T body element. So, so rows two, so three. Okay, so this is row one. I'm gonna go ahead and do that, and so T body. I'm gonna put some space there, so it's eligible. Two, three, four, five, six. Again, as I said, this is a closer tag, and so you always want to have that forward slash. And then I should run, and it should all be correct. Yep, all right, perfect. And notice nothing actually changed here. So the T body looks like it's more for organization. Table head, ooh. <sighs> I'm so tired right now. We went camping yesterday, and um, it was really cold. And I mean, that wasn't really a big deal, but I didn't really sleep well. Just that night, my um, I left all of my good camping gear in California, and so I ended up buying a cheaper tent. And me and my son were sleeping in it, and it just wasn't, you know, it's just too small. And so my, uh, my actual nice backpacking tent is a really small tent but it's long enough for me to lay down comfortably in. Whereas this cheap one that I have is, is almost the same size, but it's not quite long enough. And there's some other things that make it crappy too, but we made it work, but I didn't really sleep well. I probably slept maybe, um, I don't know, maybe three hours that night. And then I was up at around five o'clock in the morning. Just didn't sleep. 
All right, table head. Back to the important stuff. In the last exercise, the table's headings were kept inside of the table's body when the table's body is sectioned off. However, it also makes sense to section off the table's heading using the T-head element. Interesting. Okay. In the example above, the only new element is T head. The table's headings are contained inside of this element. Element. All right, so morning. All right. Enclose the first row of the table in a T head element. Okay. Table. T head. Okay, it makes sense. I understand it, but oops, sorry, I didn't put my forward slash there. So let's see what it looks like here. So there we go. So it changes the color of it, or it makes it. Oh, you know what? The only reason it changed the color is because of the CSS style CSS. We haven't actually got into that. Um, but I know that because of other information. So for anyone watching this, if you are new to uh, HTML, um, putting T head, putting information in between T head doesn't, I don't believe it inherently, it, uh, it automatically changes the color of this, the text in the box. I believe it's due to this, so that's fine. So. Yeah, I'm just going to cheat here, T head. Find it on here. Uh, well, I'm sorry. T head. Okay, so here we go. So this is what's happened. So basically, in CSS, and we won't really talk about that right now, but uh, here in the CSS, they have, um, they've instructed anything in this index document labeled well within the t-head element to change to this particular style so the background so i'm assuming yes yeah, so i'm not assuming this pound or hashtag 88 ccf1 is actually this color it's this bluish color and font family lato sans serif sans serif is the alternate so right now this font family is lato if Lonto was not be able to be shown on H on this document or this page, it would go back to sans serif. And so, so this is just an alternate this here. All right, so that's what that is. So, so this page is actually adding CSS uh, to the document, obviously here as well, due to this link here. So it's it's probably linked up here. Yeah, here it is. So this is the link. No, no, that's not the link. Here's the link. HS.CSS. So it's linked to that style CSS. All right. I'm just talking to myself here. All right, we're going to move on. So I got that understandable. All right, the table footer. So uh, the bottom part of the long table can also be sectioned off using the T foot element. Okay. In the example above, the footer contains. Uh, those are the data on the table. Footers are often used to contain sums, differences, and other data results. Add a table data footer to the bottom of the table using T foot element inside the footer. Add the data total. Okay. So, so you still, obviously, this is the footer. The footer still, you still want to keep the footer within your table element. So, so we're going to go ahead and put it right here, T foot. And then it wants us to put this information. So anytime you put information within a, a, uh, a header, a row, uh, a footer, you obviously have to put that information within the individual cells or table data cells. Okay, so TD. And we want total and TD. And then the next one is TDA. So basically it's gonna have one row with tape with total 
Oops. There's my timer. It's been 25 minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this, finish this up, and um, take a little rest break. So this row here is going to basically have uh, the first block is going to have total. The second block or second cell is going to have 28. So I'll go ahead and run that. Who run it? And I'm going to scroll down and you'll see. Boom. So these, obviously this is what we put in earlier. <coughs> the cells that don't really have any purpose are just there. Okay, so that's that. So I go ahead and run. I already did that. Press enter. Uh oh, new subscriber. Okay. Great. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Now I'm going to go ahead and take a little rest break here. So I'm going to go ahead and pause and uh, I will see you guys in. Hi, right, what's up everybody? Uh, I'm back here. This is uh, day one, part two of my learning to code. Uh, at the moment, I am learning HTML. Um, I'm using Codecademy. And this particular portion, we're talking about styling with CSS. And I just realized, maybe I realized earlier, but I didn't really notice, but pay attention. But right down here, we got 12 or 13. So this is com coming to the end of this particular uh, HTML session or lesson. So. Right now, this is CSS. CSS basically stands for Cascading Style Sheets. Um, cascading Style Sheets is what you use to make your websites, um, you know, look pretty. Right? They're they're what's used to style your web sheet or your web page. Without CSS, uh, basically, if you just use just HTML, your sheet, your web page will look like a white sheet of paper with words, pictures, or videos. So nothing really special or in hyperlinks, right? So nothing really special. Your, your web page really won't stand out. Uh, it'll just be, like I said, a white sheet of paper with just, just basic stuff on it. So uh, let's go ahead and get into this. Uh, this. I think this might be pretty short, so it won't be a full 25 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and set my little timer here. And 25 minutes and then if it's not which it won't be we'll do something else I have an idea I want to I have I'll have a website I have a web domain a web page uh, and so what I'll do, probably do is just go over me setting that up right? so going from a blank sheet of paper onto an actual legitimate website no shale sun and all right all right so Styling with CSS, let's see, tables by default are very bland. They have no borders, the font color is black, and the typeface is the same type used for other HTML elements. You can use CSS to style tables, just like you have done in the past. Specifically, you can change styles, cha chain, you can change style, what? You can change style, the various aspects mentioned above. That didn't make sense. All right, so basically, table, THTD, so I've done, uh, CSS very briefly in the past, uh, just a few days ago actually. So just from this right here, I can tell you this says basically the table, the table header, and the table data pretty much will have a border around it that's one pixel wide. It'll be solid black. The font will be Arial. The alternate font is actually sans serif. So for if for some reason the web page isn't able to show Arial, it'll alternately go to sans serif uh, and then text align basically that means the text will be aligned in the center all right so the code in the example above demonstrates just one of the various table aspects you can style using css properties you learned about earlier so interesting thing about css is that you know again i'm a, I'm a beginner at this i've only been doing this for just literally a few days now but CSS seems so complicated because there's so many ways to style the page. I mean, it's different font sizes, font types, font families. You know, uh, you can size things. You can put squares and circles and objects and, you know, everything. It means there's so much stuff. So I, for me, I, I would recommend getting a, a um, <laughs> you know, obviously learn. Obviously, you want to learn as much as possible, right? Learn, have a very good rounded knowledge of CSS. But... I think it's important to have a, what I would, I guess, a CSS manual, something that outlines, a nice, decent book that outlines all of the different uh, ways of styling using CSS. Because CSS, 
seems like a very is a vast amount of information involved in it from my understanding from my knowledge at this point so all right so here we go so i'm going to go ahead and finish this up blah 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 blah, blah. So this is in style.css change the font size of all table headings and table data to 18 pixels so i basically am yeah, already here at style css so what i want to do here is i want to find the area where they're styling the table headings and the table data so here this is the ul which is a uh, unordered list and there's the list there boom 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 let's look at that unordered list there okay so table heading th tr uh, th okay here we go so td th th td so that right there is the table uh header or heading and then here's the table data so from the looks of it here there's nothing really to change it's asking me to change the font size but right here there really is no font size on there so right now it's at whatever the default font size is for this page so we got the font family which is lato and then sans serif which is the alternate uh, no, no. padding is the so padding has to do with where the table is in the where the table is on the screen so if there's you can the less the least amount of padding the closer this table will come to the edge of the screen and more padding the further it'll go over so it's kind of what that means uh, text align so everything's aligned to the left as you can see adam green work it's on the left side if it said table align center here we'll just do that and we'll run it and see what happens and notice how everything moved to the center but that's wrong so we'll move it back to the left so anyway so going back to the actual task for this lesson here since it's wanting me to add uh it's one needs to change the font size of the table head so basically since there's nothing on here for font size i have to add that myself so let's go to uh i think it should be font size and then you want to put a colon oops that's see colon and always put a space in between and then and in css um if you want to change pixels it's px right and so we want to change to 18 pixels so then we just put 18 px no space and then we want to put a semicolon and then the curly brace is already there and we want to press run see what happens and boom it changed so it actually changed so i'm going to show you so notice the size so i'm going to go 10 pixels notice the size of those those, those letters so, I mean, yeah the letters there there we go so that's at 10 pixels but we want to do 18 pixels and then go ahead and run, make some larger, and that's it. So that's that. So HTML tables. So this is the last page for my HTML tables uh, section. Great job in this lesson. You learn how to create tables, add data to it, section tables and smaller parts that make it easier to read. Uh, let's review what you learned so far. The table elements create a table. You got it. Table row, TR, elements add rows to a table. Uh, to add data, TD, got it. Uh, table headings, clarify meaning of the data. So you always put table headings above the actual. Uh, so this will be a table heading. So company name, that's a table heading. And just, this is also styled, that blue is from CSS. All right, let's see. Okay. Call span, we got that. Uh, row span. We got that. There's different sections, table head, table body, table foot. All of those can be seen. All right. All right, so that's pretty much it. Congratulations on completing HTML tables. I'm gonna go ahead and press up next and see what happens. All right, boom. So, completed. So as you can see here, it says I completed learn HTML. That does not mean that I have this massive knowledge of html but i i do know the basics and honestly a lot of this stuff i kind of knew already because i've done it over the last you know week or so so it wasn't really that difficult 
Uh, what I'm trying to learn, right, again, as I, as I said earlier, I'm just trying to get the basics down and be very knowledgeable and able to do them without really thinking too much about them. And so that's where I'm at right now. So learning HTML is kind of what I'm doing. Uh, right now, I'm actually going to move on to, actually in the next video, I'm going to move on to learn CSS because I think I, I do have a decent understanding of HTML and the concept and, H, and CSS is kind of what's next on my list. Um, I have my little, my little sheet over here that you can't really see, but uh, my goal right now is to, um, as far as HTML today, let's see, what's today? Today is the 15th, so I'm giving myself uh, to the, the end of this month, so I want to spend about maybe 20 or so days uh, doing uh, HTML, just getting, you know, just, just pounding it, right? Just, just getting it down to where it's very much, you know, I don't have to think at all. I just kind of, oh, I need to do this, get sit down, type it out, done. And then after that, I'm going to, you know, obviously I'm, I'm starting on CSS now as well, but, uh, but by the end of next month, right? So I'm giving myself, you know, right now about 45 days to get proficient at CSS to where I can sit down and not really have to struggle or stress too much about uh, doing any CSS uh, development. And then JavaScript, I haven't, I don't actually have a date for JavaScript, but um, I'll probably add another 45 days or so of just, I mean, literally just pounding it, just straight JavaScript. And then, you know, and uh, you know, and I think by that time I'll have a very good understanding of those three concepts the css HTML, javascript and then i can uh can then start tackling the back end stuff which i believe to be the more difficult uh, the more difficult uh, parts of software development and uh and algorithms oh my gosh that's <laughs> sorry I, I was looking at algorithms earlier and uh hmm algorithms you know i've never been a big math guy right that math has never been my thing um i do I'm, I'm a very logical person so i think if i apply myself i'll be able to get it because algorithms they seem to be just more based on logic than anything and so i think i'll be able to get it if i just apply myself but um i'll be dipping my toes into that periodically throughout the weeks maybe you know probably find one or two problems you know, at a reasonable beginner level and start working on those and figuring those out. And, uh, and again, obviously, as I develop, as I learn more, work my way up to the more complicated stuff. All right. So that's it, guys. Uh, it was part two. I guess it really wasn't a part two because it wasn't a full 25 minutes. And uh, but anyways, I'll, thanks for watching, guys. And I'll talk to you all later. Peace.